This is Garage King here, and we have a 2005 uh, Chrysler uh, or Dodge Caravan coming in for uh, engine coolant leak. So we're going to check here uh, for coolant leak. I have some suspicions as I can see some coolant. However, I want to take a closer look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pressure test the radiator. So I'm going to connect this tool here. It's a great little tool. And all we do here is we can pressurize uh, the radiator. Probably about 10 pounds is good. We'll put 10 pounds in. We'll see if we can see any coolant coming out. I'm going to stop the video so I can pump up the pressure tester and then we'll be right back. Okay, we're back and actually I can hear it. Hopefully you can hear it too. And if we're looking here, we can actually see where the intake manifold meets the cylinder head. You can actually see that little bubbling right there. And you should be able to see that. You can hear it. Let's get the video a little bit better. We can actually, let's see if we can see on the side. There we go. If we can get in there a little tighter. There you go. You can see it actually see it bubbling there. And I'm just going to back up so you can see exactly where it is. It's right at the intake manifold where it meets the cylinder head. Now, there may be a few more leaks because if we look down here, we're going to look a little deeper. We're going to see that there's coolant down here as well. You can see there's a whole bunch of coolant down there. So what I want to do is I'm going to want to take a closer look to make sure we don't actually have cylinder head leakage and it's just the intake manifold. But what we're going to do is we're going to move over here. Down here we see the alternator. And now if I look down here, right down there I can see a puddle. Look straight down I can see a puddle of coolant. And if we look there we can see some as well. Plus, if I look down here right at the alternator, if you want I'm going to have to zoom in just a wee bit. But I can see, I'm going to turn, turn my phone this way. And you can see right there, there we go. You can see there's some dry, dry coolant right there on the bolt there for the back of the alternator, that orange just to the left of the cylinder head bolt, the orange you see, that's dry coolant. So we're going to back up again and we can see there it's quite wet there. So I'm not sure exactly uh, where it's leaking. I know for sure the intake manifold, but we've got to do further investigation uh, to make sure that their cylinder heads aren't leaking as well. Now we're just going to check the rear head. So I got my light set up so you guys will be able to see. I'm slowly poking down here. There we go. And there's the rear head. You can see where it hits uh, hits the engine block. Let's get the light down here and get you guys a little bit better view. There you go. You can actually see there's words written on the block there. I think it was a used engine. You can take a look at the cylinder head there. And there's uh, the orange again. You can see. I believe at this point it's just leaking really bad um, from the intake manifold. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to do the intake manifold and uh, run it and s see how she goes. Alright, so we've decided to do uh, the intake manifold. Alright, I've uh, taken off just the air cleaner basically. I've taken off the throttle cables. So right there, those two bolts. I've undone the two bolts there for the power steering pump reservoir. Taken off my vacuum hoses. Um, just wanted to show you guys here. These two bolts here for the EGR, you should uh, take them off by hand. I was able to crack them free uh, with just my tool here. Avoid air tools on that just so you don't damage the threads uh, on those ones. Alright, now we're going to take off uh, all the connectors for the throttle body and in the front. I want to show you there is actually three uh, connectors uh, present. One here is for the air filter. There's a second one here. On a throttle body and there's actually one underneath it uh, for your throttle position sensor. So as you can see, you get the light in there, there's actually three connectors and they're kind of a little tricky to get off. Uh, don't wiggle them too hard, don't break them. There's a, a, a tab right here and what you have to do with the tab is you actually slide the tab back and then you squeeze. And uh, it's kind of hard to see uh, but you'll get it. You can see there, I've squeezed the tab forward. This is how it is in the connected uh, position then you slide this red thing back like this there it slid back and then what you do is you just squeeze on top you can there's a thing there you'll be able to you'll be able to see I'll try to get it like there this piece there I'm pointing with my thumb you'll be squeezing on that um, undo those three and then we'll continue on all right now to get the power steering reservoir off one thing I wanted to show you is you, you do those two bolts okay and then there's actually there's um you can't even see it from this side, but there is a nut in there. But how I'm going to show you guys this 
is uh, I was able to get in from the back here and you just got to loosen it. Once you loosen it, you have these two uh, bolts undone and they're not holding it to the back. You just lift it up, you can pull it aside and actually once you pull it aside, just like this, I'm going to get in there with the light and you can see where it was being held. Right here. This is the nut here, right here. And actually the plastic piece, it just slides over there and that's what holds it in uh, place for these two things here. So it'll just go back just in there like that and then it pops on. And as you can see, it just pops up just like that. So that's how to get the power steering reservoir off. Now that the power reservoir is loose, as you can see, just loose, we can flip it around. We're going to take the coil off. So what we got to do is however you feel comfortable, mark your wires. Um, this is two, four, six. These ones are labeled, so it's easy for me to remember. You can see little two, four, and six. And this one on this side is five, one, and three. And uh, you want to make sure you get those right or your car's not going to run right when it's uh, done. So we're just going to pull these off and you can just give them a twist like this and they just come off pretty easily. And uh, there's a view from this side. You can see it come off nice and easy. And then there's actually just two bolts. One is right there. I'm pointing to it right there. And the other one you can see on this side right there. We're going to take those off and then pop the coil off. All right, now I've pushed the, the power steering reservoir out of the way. We've got the cables off here, the high tension cables for the spark plugs. There's actually a little connector there. You can see just right back there. We just unplug that from the coil. And now we just have two bolts right there. That's gonna be very easy uh, to take out. We can just get our handy dandy air tool. And we're gonna take those ones out. There's one, is loosened off, just like that. I'm going to take the other one off. Just like that. Air tools help you big time if you have them. We're going to take our two nuts off, put them there, and then there's our coil. It's going to lift right off. Actually, I'll lift it with the other hand so you can see it, keep the light shining on it. It's probably a better angle for you guys. And there we go. Just coming off just like this. Just make sure this power steering reservoir is not in the way. It's a little bit of jimmy and I'm doing it with one hand. Anyway, and there's our coil. So coil is off. So we're going to put that to the side. And now, what we can do, keep that power steering reservoir out of the way. We're just going to lift this off out of the way the base of our coil there and there now we have a lot better access uh, to the intake manifold we're gonna have to take this hose off upper rad hose there's a sensor over there we're gonna pop that off and then we're gonna be taking off uh, the upper intake very shortly all right now I've taken out all the bolts there's uh, eight of them in total one two three four four on the back side there's actually a vacuum hose right underneath here, I'll reach in and show it to you guys. It's right here, it's connected to the bottom of the throttle body. So once all of that is, uh, once all that's done, it's pretty much free. Uh, watch when you wiggle it loose, I've already wiggled it loose so you don't lose uh, your little gasket there. There's a gasket for the EGR valve. So now that this is free, I can just uh, basically pull it out. So I'm gonna lift it up and I'm just gonna pull it out. Just like that. And that's it, it's out. And then uh, we got the rest to start on. All right, now that we got everything free, uh, we got the fuel line off. That was here, that's easy enough to do. It's just, uh, it's just a black clip. You just push it in like this, pull it out. Uh, what I've done is I've taken off the bolts. Uh, there's four of them on the fuel rail right here. And what that is, is it just allows us to be able to move the fuel rail a little bit. Now you don't actually have to take out the injectors. Some guys will take the whole fuel rail off, they'll take out the injectors, they're gonna take everything. But you know what? If you get in there, uh, here's a trick with uh, just a quarter inch. Uh, obviously we're gonna torque it when we put it back together. But you can actually get in uh, to all the bolts. I'm gonna put the light there. And you can see uh, there's, a, there's a bolt. There's a bolt right there. So once we get inside here, we're gonna get into this bolt here. 
and you can actually see, there I'm on it right there. So I'm going to hang this back up here just so I can show you. So here's a bolt right here, here's a bolt right here. I can come from the back in here. There's a bolt right there. You'll see my socket. There it goes. It's right there. So you can actually get on all of them uh, with just a quarter inch. Three eighths is a little tight because you're going to be hitting the injectors, but with quarter inch you can get it. So we're going to take out all the bolts. All right, so we have everything undone here. We have all the electrical connections here undone. All the wires are undone. I've taken the bolts out. Lower radiator hose over here has been taken off. So that's taken off. And actually, as you can see, the intake just popped free. So we'll back up a bit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift the whole intake manifold out here. So right here, we're going to just get in here. It takes a little bit of uh, muscle, but not too much. And we're just going to lift the whole thing out just like this. And as you can see, we just got to make sure that nothing's caught on it. And we're just going to pull it right out like this. We just got to make sure this is off here. Make sure that we're all free from everything. And then she'll come right out. And actually we got one more hose on. Okay, so I got to take one more hose off and it's a heater hose. I didn't realize I forgot right on this side. And basically then I'll just disconnect it and there she's off. All right, so I've swiveled the intake back. I just wanted to give you guys a close look at what is actually was hanging on there for a second. And it's just that hose right there, just a heater hose. So I'll just undo that clip. That's the only thing holding it on and then I'm gonna lift it right out. All right, so I got the intake out. So now it's sort of a uh, inspection time. So we're gonna take a look down there. And don't forget to undo the bolts. There's one bolt there, and there's one bolt there. And that'll release the gasket. And as you can see, uh, there's quite a bit of uh, antifreeze down there. And this was leaking for a while. It's all dried up there and cruddy. So we're gonna have to just clean all of this up. So now what we're gonna do is it's time to just clean everything up. And actually what I'm gonna do too with these bolt holes there, those are the bolt holes for the intake, is I'm just going to run a tap through them just to make sure that uh, the bolt holes are nice and clean. The other thing I wanted to mention is uh, some of the bolts that came out. I'll show you what they look like. Some of them don't actually look the best, as you can see. You don't want to put that back in. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take those to the wire wheel. We're just going to clean them all up. And uh, then we're going to start putting it back together. All right, and here we have the intake manifold. It is on the bench now. I've cleaned it all on top, everywhere it's been nicely cleaned. If you turn it over, you can see underneath as well. Everywhere it's cleaned, especially this area right here. Here's the area where uh, you want to make sure it's clean because you seal for oil. There's oil in the valley there. So it's all nicely cleaned. That's important. So then this way when we reassemble it, it won't leak. So that's it. Now we're going to go take a quick look at the engine, see uh, as I've cleaned that as well. Okay, we're going to take a quick look at the engine now. Here's the light, and as you can see, everything is very, very clean. Uh, all the mating surfaces for the gaskets are very, very clean. It's very, very important to have them clean. Just like that. Now we're going to take a quick look at the gasket. Uh, here's a gasket that actually goes on... Uh, on the motor, it's actually it's a steel gasket. It's got a little piece of steel on each side. If you flip it over, you're gonna see it's got a little rubber seal on each side. So, as I said, it's clean there. Now, obviously, if we just put this straight down here, that rubber seal, we're gonna have a major leak. So, what we're gonna have to do is, in the valley, right in here, we're gonna have to put a bead of silicone. Right there, it's very, very important. You're going to want to put a bead of silicone right there as well. And then what you'll do is you'll put the gasket in and you'll torque, uh, you'll torque down just the two very end bolts. All right, I've just popped uh, the intake gasket in. You can see there, it's one bolt. There's, your, there's the other bolt. You can actually see the silicone uh, coming out of it just from the side. Uh, like I said, let's put a little bit of silicone on each of uh, the corners there. So you can see we got a little bit of silicone coming out uh, on each side there. There you go, you can see a little bit of silicone from the back. 
All right, I have the lower intake manifold on, and I have uh, torqued all the bolts. There is a there is a sequence to it. Um, Seventeen foot pounds is uh, is what you got to torque them to. Um, But uh, it's all torqued down, so now I'm just going to do all the connections in reverse of what we did before, and then we're going to put uh, the upper intake on. All right, now we just put uh, upper intake back on. I haven't uh, torqued anything down yet. You can actually see uh, the bolts are still uh, they're still loose. So I just got it in position. Uh, put the EGR screws in. Clipped our electrical connections that are supposed to be there. Fuel lines on, vacuum lines are on. Uh, the power steering pump reservoir, uh, it's still loose, so I haven't uh, done that yet, but the coil is back on. So we're just moving uh, right along, and a uh, couple more clips, uh, tighten up these screws, put the air box back on, and then uh, all we have left to do is put the linkage back on, just for the, for the throttle body, and that'll connect right here. That's these things right here. And then we're done. All right, we're back. We got the engine all together. It's uh, it's looking good. Engine's all together there. As you can uh, see, everything's put back together nicely. Uh, what I did is I actually filled the coolant up and then uh, I put the pressure tester back on. Now, if you remember from the first uh, episode, or first part, I should say, um, I was leaking really bad once it hit five pounds. Well, we pressure tested it, put 10 pounds in there, just to be uh, to be safe, don't overpressurize anything, and it is holding nicely. So, uh, leak is fixed.